Hello again. In this installment, we're going to look at a feature that your application absolutely has to support in order to get into the Windows Store. And it's a feature actually that's so important that every time you create a new page and every time you work with UX and layout, you should have this feature in mind and figure out how you're going to handle it. And that feature is what's called Snapped View. Now, if you're not familiar with Snapped View, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the calendar so you can kind of compare and contrast. And here's the calendar running. Um, and it is just like we would expect um, based on what we've done with TweetScan. It's taking up the entire screen. It's providing a, a view that uses all the screen real estate. And if we look at TweetScan, we can see here we are, our old friend, and it's looking just fine, right? Taking up the whole screen. But here's where they start to differ. I'm going to come in and drag in the calendar control. And you'll see that the calendar has adapted itself to what we call the snapped window or the snapped pane. And this pane is 320 pixels wide. It's a fixed size. And you can see that you know we, we start to lay out you know our, our um, day our calendar events you know vertically. It's just an experience that's kind of optimized for this view. Now let's compare that to TweetScan. When we go over to TweetScan, you can see that we're still keeping that horizontal panning experience. We're, we're still acting as if we're on the big screen, and and you might not think that's a big deal. But the problem here is that if I try to, if I, you know, kind of roll over here, maybe I'm doing a little, you know, scrolling, and then I try and use my finger on a touch device to swipe back this way, I'm going to be kind of, you know, or, or swipe the other way. I might be activating the charms bar accidentally. I might be dragging on the, the swipe uh, uh, splitter here or the snap splitter. And that's just not a good experience. We really should put a vertical experience. As a matter of fact, if you read the design guidelines, it tells you that you should switch to, a, to sort of a, a vertical sort of experience when you're in snap view. Now let's go back to the desktop and get rid of this and start talking about what we have to deal with. In our case, we have two things we have to deal with. One is programmatically we need to switch our grid um, or our list view control to go from the grid layout to a list layout. The other problem we have is that in our layout itself, if we come in and look at one of the tweet um, uh, classes here that defines this element, we can see that the tweet itself is set to be 500 pixels wide which is wider than the entire search plane itself. So we have both kind of some programmatic stuff to change functionality, but then also some layout and design sorts of things from a CSS perspective. Let's go ahead and tackle the coding part first. And we'll switch into the code here. And what we're going to do is grab our window object. And we are going to add an event listener. And the, the event we're interested in is the resize event. And what we're going to do is, is listen to um, an on resize uh, function that we want to be able to uh, cap, you know, run anytime the, the screen size changes. Let's come up here and start to implement that. Now what I want to do is just keep track of the last view state I was in. That way I can kind of tell what sort of transitions I'm undergoing. And then what we'll do is we'll have on resize. So we're going to grab um, the view control itself that's on the page. What we're going to do is we're going to go grab grid view one. If you remember, that's just giving us the DOM element, and we want to work with its properties so that we, as a win control, so that we can change its layout render. So we'll go ahead and grab it that way. And we're going to go and get the current view state. What state are we actually in? And the way we find that is we go to Windows, UI, View Management, Application View, and we grab its value. And what that's going to give us back is essentially an integer. Now we do give you an enumeration, and just to show you where that is, if I want to know what the snapped enumeration is so I don't have to remember the numbers, I can go into Windows UI view management application view state, and you can see I have several different enumerators here that I can choose from. Full screen landscape, full screen portrait pretty much makes sense. Snapped obviously is the small little pane. Um, filled is the remainder of the screen. So when TweetScan was running and we brought calendar into the snap view, that would have put TweetScan into the filled state. Now we're interested in grabbing snap. Now for a lot of applications, you can treat filled and um, landscape the same. They're, they're very similar, you need an equal sign up there. Um, but for some apps like games or something like that where you're pixel perfect, you may need to be able to differentiate that. And then TweetScan, for example, we wouldn't care because we can just keep scrolling horizontally even out of filled. Now what we're going to look at is the current view state. And we're going to say, hey, if you're actually snapped, then what I want to do is I want to go in and grab that view and grab its layout renderer and come in and say, you know what, let's go ahead and use a new winjs.ui.list layout. We want to go to that vertical sort of layout. Now what we'll also check is otherwise that if my last view state is snapped and I'm coming from a non-snap state, 
Well, my current state is not snapped, sorry. So I'm transitioning away from snapped is what we're looking at here. Is what we want to do is view layout is equal to new WinJS UI, switch back to our grid layout. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a quick uh, deploy of that solution. And let's see how we're looking at this point. Fire that up, looking okay so far. Bring it, we'll just bring in the desktop. And why don't we go ahead and snap over. And sure enough, we're in a nice vertical scrolling environment, but a few problems here. There's no scroll bar to let me know this is gonna scroll. And look how the tweets are hanging off the edge. I can't see all of those. So, hmm, need to fix that. So how do we go about doing that? We switch back to the desktop. Evidently, we'll go into Blend. And let's start figuring out how we fix this. So the first thing we need to worry about is we need to go in and first make sure that our tweets will fit and that our grid renders correctly. Now to do that, uh, what we're going to rely on is using the media elements in our CSS definitions. So what we'll do is we will come into our home CSS and we're going to drag our input selector down into the media element. And you notice here the current uh, on the media screen, the definition is MS view state snapped. So this will automatically be applied when we transition into um, a snapped environment. I can actually simulate this from a design perspective by using my device pane and saying, hey, show me my view in snap mode. And I can see already, wow, much, way, way, way bigger. And if we drill in here a little bit and maybe go over to my live DOM, let's go ahead and find the grid. There are some automatically applied transitions. So if you come here and look, what we get just out of the default temp, uh, project template setup is we get new definitions, for example, for the fragment header. So we kind of shrink and change some margins and things like that. So you can explore those in a little more detail. But what we're going to do is go ahead and select our grid view here. And the first thing I want to do is make my grid view fit into the window. Now, um, the default media elements already have me um, putting a 20 pixel uh, gutter here along the side of my of my uh, section, which is fine. And I just want to have the scroll bar run right along the edge here uh, and make that all fit. And what that basically means is I'm going to come in here and create a new style rule based on the element ID. And when I add this, you will see that it's added right here as a rule underneath this media query. And what we'll do is we'll just come in and now say when we're in this rule, go ahead and open up the sizing and we're going to set the width to 300 pixels. So it snaps right along the edge. And now the, what we need to do is work with these tweets. And so we'll drill down into um, our design layout, grab the tweet um, uh, itself. Say I want to go ahead and create a style rule for tweet. And again, it's going to be added into our media query. And what I'm going to do with that tweet is I'm going to go ahead and set a couple different things. The first thing I want to do is say that it's maximum width. Um, you know, we're going to have the, the scroll bar on the side from the, the um, lit, from the grid view itself. So let's go ahead and just set the width on this to be something a little smaller. Uh, how about 280 pixels wide? And we'll put that in. And then what we'll also do is we'll come in and let's give it just a little bit of margin um, along the bottom to kind of make things, you know, space out. We haven't really set a bottom, a bottom margin. Now, right now, because we haven't updated the code and done a refresh and things like that, we can still kind of see the grid showing up in design view. Uh, no worries about that. We're going to go ahead and save all. We could do a refresh, go to interactive mode, whatever we would like to do to, to fix that problem. But let's go ahead and go back into Visual Studio now. Go ahead and uh, deploy our new solution. And let's go ahead and see what we get. Everything's looking pretty good here. Come over and let's go ahead and grab um, the calendar control, drag that in. And we'll go out to full screen or out to snap view. And all of a sudden, voila, there's our scroll bar. We can still tap on items, still select items if we want. 
and that's looking a heck of a lot better. So that's your quick introduction to working with the Snap View. Very important, you really wanna have a good user experience here uh, for your users so they'll feel like, hey, I can use your app even in this small screen real estate while maybe I'm taking care of some more temporarily important things over here. So that's really kind of the introduction. I hope that uh, works and, and makes sense and we'll start to add um, search in the next episode. Thank you.